Welcome back. My name is Chris Patrick and today we are working on our video number three on our street stock video series. So come with us. Today we're going to work on some suspension and starting to talk a little bit about the body. So let's get a little bit closer and let's get started. Guys. Okay guys, welcome back to my workbench and uh, today we've got you a little bit closer on starting to set up our street stock vehicle. Now you're going to notice I've already torn this rear end completely apart and there's a few reasons why I wanted to do this. And I didn't feel like it needed to be part of a video of just tearing apart a car. Um, so, long story short, the car has a ball differential already inside of the B6D. Um, the ball diffs are fantastic for certain applications, but in my situation, because the amount of stress that's going to be on the back end, I really don't want a fell point of the ball diff being a catastrophic failure during a race so I am opting to go with a ball diff but since I'm this far into it I have to tear apart the transmission to get to the differential anyway so there's a nice modification that you guys can do to get less resistance on all of your bearings so you have to tear apart the car get all the way down to your transmission and actually take each bearing out once you get a bearing out, out of your particular um, unit, whichever the case is. So in this case, let's pop out one of these. I've already done it, but uh, I will show you some pictures of some before and during and after. But what you do is you take a X-Acto knife and this blue Teflon sheathing cover actually puts a little bit of extra drag on your bearings so you just take your time go in one of the corners right along the edge and usually you can get your exacto knife inside here and pick out this one going to come out or is it going to make a fool out of me there it comes So they're not exactly easy to get out. They just take a little bit of finesse, a little bit of patience. There we go. So on this ball bearing and this cap, the cap is kind of hard to see but it's got a metal ring and on that ring it has that cover around it so they have access blue sheathing basically around it and it's a metal ring so what happens is is that extra pressure is being applied to the ball bearing and it actually causes your ball bearing to be uh, basically excessive drag so if you take an X-Acto knife, go around the outside edge all the way up against the metal ring, you will actually free up your ball bearing quite significant. And when it comes to racing applications, the freer you can get any drivetrain, the better off you're going to be. Um, it, it's not about horsepower. I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not. But um, it's, it's about drag. Drag is, is the killer to any race car. It doesn't matter what you're doing, um, if whether it be off-road, street racing, road racing, it does not matter. So free up all of your ball bearings. That is hands down 
going to make lap times quicker. It may be an eighth of a second or a tenth of a second faster every lap, but hey, that's a tenth of a second that you're going to gain that somebody else may not do because they didn't take the extra steps to prepare their ball bearings. So once you get everything prepared there, um, I wanted to build a, a uh, gear diff. I already had one. Um, I just didn't use it very often, so I tore it apart, gave it a nice cleaning, and uh, um, used some brake clean to get everything nice and clean as best as I could. And the kicker to anything that you're going to do is, is lubrication. You have to make sure that everything is lubed up correctly or things will not last. And that's going to be kind of the, the big question mark as to... Um, what do you want to do for lubrication? And that's up to you guys. It's hard to say one way or another. Because some people do it differently than others. Some people may run a real light diff fluid. Um, let's just say like a, a, a 2000 diff fluid. Some people may run other things inside their diffs. That is completely up to them um, I am not going to run diff fluid I will tell you that right now and the reasons why I'm not going to run diff fluid is because this car will be used predominantly on a high bite situation whether it be um, street stock dirt racing or asphalt oval racing it does not matter um, so what I mean by that is, is, um, with, with high bite, the last thing you want is to have a differential that is completely, um, locked or, or real tight. You want a really, really loose differential or you're going to get basically nothing but push, push and push because you're going to fight front grip because the back end is going to be too hooked so, um, a bunch of research was done, and after I found a bunch of research and figured out kind of what I was looking at, discovered that a lot of people run um, some kind of oil instead of grease, which kind of makes sense. Um, I can't argue against the theory about that, because it, it makes sense to me, Um because you want your diff basically to be as open and as free as possible. And it's all about friction. It, that You're basically trying to eliminate as much of that friction you can get out of... Oops, it helps if I put those on right. I'm talking instead of paying attention. Um, so when you try to free up all the stuff, you have to come up with alternative solutions to kind of what you're looking at and, and kind of figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So I am going to use what's called Remington oil or rim oil to be exact. And there's a few reasons why. First off, I already have it. That's probably one of the biggest reasons. Um, second off, it works really well for high temperature applications because it's designed for firearms. So I want something to lubricate these gears so that if heat was to build up or something along those lines, then I have some form of protection. But you want extremely thin oil. The thicker the oil, the more resistance that you're going to get through these gears, which means more traction, um, and in this situation, you don't want rear lock. You want your rear end to be as open as you can be because that's how you're going to be able to turn. If you, if it's locked, you're going to push. Just trust me. Um, I'm not going to put a whole lot of Remington oil in this. That's what's in this little application. I use Remington oil on, um, ball bearings. I use it for motor drops, uh, for oil for your motors and now I'm going to use it in my differential. I don't need a ton, just enough to kind of cover everything up loosely. Um, and then don't forget your gasket. 
and then I'm missing a screw, so I'm gonna have to scrounge one up from somewhere. Somehow I got a dog hair on this gear. Here we go. And that, my friends, is how you would rebuild a differential designed for a street stock application. Um, we're going to continue this video with some setup tips and we're going to start putting this back together. And uh, we're going to go from there. Unfortunately, it's a B6, so I do not have the luxury of putting in rear steer using the C and D blocks. Um, it just doesn't, the, the B6 doesn't offer that feature. So I may have to come up with something to figure out maybe a possible way to offset these a little bit. Whether it be drilling a couple holes, I don't really know yet. I have to figure that part of it out. Um, but so far, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the progress that we've got with this. So stay tuned, guys, for a little bit more. And uh, we're going to roll on to continue putting this back together. And I'll bring you all along with me once I get this uh, tidied up a little bit more. And we'll start talking about springs and, and so forth for, for oval racing. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so we're on to our next step. I have started to assemble things, and I was using my electric drill and discovered my next tech tip for you guys because I honestly forgot about this step. So when you're tightening your housing screws that hold your differential and your gearing together, when you go and make them extremely tight, what happens is this puts so much pressure on these housings it actually puts side pressure on your bearings and creates more drag so perfect example if you look at this and i spin this i'm sure you can hear it but you can see that it's relatively free but let's just simply tighten one screw all the way down. So let's go to this back housing, tighten this up till it's nice and snug. That probably didn't change a whole lot. Let's try one more. Let's go with uh, the middle one here. Notice the difference. So you've worked all of this time to get your bearings free you've got your differential loose everything is where it needs to be and you don't pay attention to this step and this will kill everything that you've just worked so hard on getting tight freed up so what you do is you start with one screw and check it and then keep going so like i'm gonna go to this front one tighten it up until it's like snug and then I'm gonna back it off about a full turn I'm still happy with that we'll go with uh, the front one here that's still free top one this one I'm gonna snug down a little bit more than I, I normally would with the other ones just because it's more of the support for the waterfall bridge here so that's good so I could tighten this top one down just a little bit more if I really wanted notice it slowed down just that little bit yes the little details is what will make the difference of a car being fast reliable and consistent so pay attention to your drivetrain. Hands down, that is where a motor will make or break you. It, it, you could spend $200 on a motor, and if you have all the drag in the world in your transmission and your differentials, then you're going to be slow, and you're going to wonder why. I just spent $200 on this professionally tuned motor. It doesn't matter to the manufacturer, whatever it is and you're running the best ESCs and the best batteries, everything is where it needs to be. But if you have drag 
you're going to be slow. So let's uh, start putting this back together a little bit more, and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, guys, now that we've done our differential and everything is loose as a goose, which is what you're wanting for being able to turn on higher bite situations, uh, torn apart the back end, and we're going to start talking about suspension. I've already done a lot of the work, but I, I kind of want to bring you along a little bit part of this way. So um, this particular buggy is a B6 Club Edition, so it does not have adjustable pill inserts like the B6.1 or the 6.2. So they do make some aftermarket components that are out there that are replacement C and D block for the front and the rear of the B6. So in my situation, I had to spend a little bit of money. And this is kind of a critical piece because it's going to allow you to change the angle of your arms to canter rear steer basically on this back end. So I've torn apart the buggy all the way apart. So we're going to put it back together live basically. But I had to disconnect everything to make room for the C block to come out. So let's put this one Let's uh, put this back together. So, believe, believe it goes that way. Yep. Trying to do this one-handed and recording is never easy. Now, of course, this is going to add a little bit more rigidity to the car. Um, there's a few reasons on why you want to go this way. Uh, my biggest reason on why I am doing it is it gives me the flexibility to be able to control the rear end. And that's the most important part to me. So now that we've got our C block mounted, I've already went ahead and purchased our rear. Oh, by the way, the... Um, C block is a J Concepts B6 and a B6D rear suspension C mount, and it is part number 2571-2, and it's $13 retail price. And then the pill kit for these is not that part number, because that's the rear spring for my other buggy. So I don't know where the part number is. Oh, wait a minute. I might have it right here. Yep, arm, it's called arm mount inserts, and it's part number 92014, and that's what this is. I've already stolen a couple for my other buggy, but in this case, I am wanting the polar extreme that I can get, which looks like it's going to be one degree, and then you can change squats and everything else, so I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put as, as much squat that I can into it, which means I want on the front, the top right corners, and then the rear, I want them to be bottom left corners is what I'm looking for. So when you go to put your pills on, pay attention to how those are set. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm, you want them to be in parallel with each other. Some people may suggest leaving the right side more square and just doing the inside again it's going to come down to preference i am by no means a professional when it comes to tuning a chassis uh this is just a bunch of research that i've done this is going to be the baseline start for myself to kind of figure out where i want to go with this because honestly i don't really know we're just kind of winging it and going for it and you guys are coming along with me so it's all a learning curve for us, everyone. So let's go ahead. Got our pills reinserted here. So let's uh, let's get our transmission reinstalled back here real quick, and then we'll put our D block in. 
Next. This is just gonna be six short screws here. I'm not making these all the way tight yet. Not until I get all six in, and then I'll go through and resnug them. While I'm doing this, uh, we'll talk about uh, a recent event that I went and uh, did some practice. I actually went to go race, and unfortunately, not enough people showed up, so it became a testing practice session at uh, the Ohio RC factory on Sunday and I was extremely happy with the results of my buggy uh, I was able to pick up about three three and a half four seconds a lap with the new setup so things are looking good on the off-road world so I'm going to attempt this Saturday night to go run a high dollar series and uh it's their, they call it Saturday Night Summer Series, I think is the name of it. And the winners obviously get a prize, money, and so forth. So I'm going to attempt to do that. And it's more of a, me trying to push myself as a driver more than anything. Because I that's where I'm at at this point. I think the setup is, is where it needs to be. My tire game needs a little bit more work. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I was extremely happy with my mount or uh, my progress that I've got on the off-road world so we're gonna try it so we are on to our rear D mount now so this is the B6 and the B6D rear suspension D mount and unfortunately this one's in blue they were out of stock on black I'm okay with the blue though it's part number 2572-1 J concepts and so with this you gotta translate everything in kind of reverse so the mount itself is going to go on along with your rear bumper which would be just like so faces forward so in this case I want bottom and left for all of these if you're looking at it from the rear like we are so bottom left and bottom left and that's gonna put the preload so that they're facing outwards and the most anti-squat you can get. So start with one side. Don't forget your drive shaft. There we go. And we'll do the other side. Hopefully you guys are able to see. I apologize if you can't, but I'm trying to do this and record all at the same time. And it's not easy, might I add. I know I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I give mad props to anybody that does this professionally, that is. You trying to record RC builds and racing and everything else and YouTube videos at the same time. It is not easy at all, especially trying to race because there's so much going on during a race event. You just kind of have to focus on the recording side of things. Then you got to focus on you as a driver. Then you have to focus on the track, the quality of what you're doing. Like, there's so much stuff that gets thrown into it. Okay. Come on. Why is this not wanting to slide in? There's one. the other side okay that took a little finagling but that's kind of to be expected honestly and then put in our two screws on our bumper 
but these still need to be replaced. They are the, instead of the flat heads, they are the recessed heads. So, one of these days I'll get around to actually putting the correct screw on here. But for the time being, they will work. So, suspension components. Uh, you're going to notice I've already went ahead and reinstalled all of the shocks with the correct springs. Or at least for my current setup. And this is where I want your guys' input and opinions. Uh-oh. Why is that, you know, quirky crazy? Hmm. It's not 2.5. Is that rounded off? It is. Okay. Well, looks like we're going to have to find some new screws. Uh, let's see what we got. So, three millimeters. They're going to be relatively long. So, let's go with three by 14. It's probably a little long. So, what do I have? Three by 12s. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go ahead. And these are actually the right screws I've been looking for this whole time. Let's go ahead, swap these out, a little shorter, they're probably the 14s, but the 14s millimeter length is, yeah they are, no they're not, I thought they would have been, so they're not, so we're going to put these in for now. So with these being the flush mount instead of the cone shapes for the recess mounts, it's not going to put as much pressure on the plastic because when you screw tighten down the other screws, which are these, it's going to actually spread out that plastic a little bit and that's where the weak point's going to be. So probably going to have to replace that with some longer screws but for the time being it's going to be just fine so let's talk about the rest of the suspension while we're here um as you notice i've already put the springs on all four corners and i've got the ride height set extremely low um i believe the ride height is around 16 millimeters right now i think it's 16 in the front and 17 in the rear. I forget off the top of my head. It's low. I know it's low, but that's kind of intended to be that way. So, um, talking about suspension and how this is laid out, you want a relatively medium weight to cross weight your left rear and your right front. And what happens is, as you're going to go into the corner and you're starting to steer then your buggy is going to want to body roll to the outside. And it's kind of crossing over from the inside when you come off of the corner. The weight's going to unload from this side here as you're digging in, and it's going to want to go to that back corner. So that's where you're going to want your probably your heaviest spring in the rear. Some people are going to run equivalent springs across the rear, and a harder one in the right, right front, and a, the lightest one in the left front. That's going to be personal preference on driving style and learning how to manage um, your vehicle, whether it be loose or whether it be tight. Um, going in, loose in, or, or loose off will depend on how you're going to want to change that. But also, you can change your ride height, which will help that. Um, change shock oils, which will help change your dynamics of your shocks. But this is kind of the universal starting point for myself is green on like I said the left rear and the right front I've got a red on the right sorry left front and then I've got a yellow on the right rear so you'll see what I'm talking about if I try pushing on this and if especially if you're going into a corner it's going to want a body roll 
and then when you come out of the corner, it's going to unload, and it's going to put actually a little bit more pressure on the front left and as as it comes into the straightaway. So then when you go to dive into it again, the back end's going to hook because it's going to be a little bit on the lighter side, and it's going to want to zip around. And when it comes around, the, the back end's going to lift, and that's where everything that you do from the front is going to change the rear. Everything you do from the rear is going to change from the front. And it's, uh, it's a balancing game between the front and the rear and figuring out what your car is going to do and what it's not going to do, whether it be pushing or uh, loose or tight, basically. So, so as for setup changes, learning what you need to do as a driver will have a lot to do with this. So we're going to start with toe. So typically the front end toe on these buggies is roughly one sixteenth of a toe out. Um, you might be able to go a little bit more, maybe to an eighth of an inch of toe out, but um, toe out typically it's more of checking your camber and chassis heights. It's all linked together. So if you change one, you got to check everything else. So as for um, let's say your front toe end, so less less turn in steering and it's going to create more exit steering or more aggressive down the stretches. So it's going to kind of be twitchy and darty. It's going to be your feeling as you're driving straight. So once you got more toe out or the front toe out, it's going to have less exit steering, which can, which basically means pushing um, and a more balanced down your straightaway because if it's towing out just a little bit, it's going to help track your, your buggy's not going to want to go stupid crazy. Um, rear toe, on the other hand, is kind of one of those things where some people will run it straight and some people will run it up to six degrees. Uh, it just comes down to personal preference on how you like it. And rear toe um, it basically affects the cornering of your car. And every car is going to be different. It all comes down to how much rear toe you put in it and everything else. So... Um, we're going to start with left rear toe. So the left side of your buggy, um, you always run it. It's towed in in every oval chassis is what it's saying. So the right rear is between zero and six degrees. Generally, it, it says in the article that you're using a left right, left rear toe angle to adjust how the car enters the corner. Which, again, it goes down to you throwing your car into the corner and you're loading up that back spring. That's going to be where that comes into play. Um, it's just a matter of kind of figuring out what works with you. So, the more rotation the chassis will have on corner entry, both on and off power, the fewer degrees the left rear is towed in. The less rotation the chassis will have on corner entry... Yeah, so foam tire setups run between 1 to 3 degrees left rear toe in, while buggy setups often use the 4 to 6 degree range for your left rear toe in. So now you're going to talk about your right rear toe in. So right rear is set up a few degrees than the left rear. So the left rear is going to be a little bit more aggressive than your right rear. Um, and that's kind of to be expected because it's going to help pull it around when you get a little bit less toe and the outside doesn't have to travel as far. So that's kind of where that goes. So, so a lot of people are going to do that between buggies will be zero and four degrees on the right rear toe in. So some ideas of things to keep in mind is going to be the rear toe cheat sheet. Uh, you can Google this and you'll find this information. But if you're tight on entry, you're going to want to increase the left rear toe in. So if you're pushing on corner in, add more left rear toe. If you're loose on entry, then you want to decrease your toe on your left rear. So if you're tight on exit, so basically the left side is entry, the right side is exit, is what it comes down to. So tight on exit is going to be decreasing your right rear toe and then if you're loose on exit then you're going to increase your toe so that kind of gives you guys an idea and that's where everything goes into place of knowing if you change one thing it's going to affect everything down the road so i hope that 
get you guys um, some ideas on tuning. Oh, um, we're also going to talk about some steering here in a second. So I'm waiting currently on parts to show up to, to do this, but it's called Ackerman Angle. So, and it's the translation of angle when basically you're steering your buggy. So, imagine my buddy explained this to me and it made sense. A red solo cup. I don't have one handy, but if you happen to lay it down, actually, I've got something similar. So, if you'd grab a cup like this one, for example, this particular cup is similar in shape to a red solo cup. So if you lay this down, notice how this diameter is smaller than the outside. And if you push this straight, it's going to turn that way. Common sense. So what happens is, with an Ackerman angle on your buggy... So let me bring this back over here so you guys can follow. So if you're going straight, these are both in parallel to each other. And if these angles are all correct, in theory... If you turn left, let's say 30 degrees, this one is also going to be 30 degrees, in theory. So what happens is, if you change the angle of this arm out here, which is your steering linkage, to a longer shaft, this one has a shorter distance to go to full lock. This one, on the other hand, is still going to be degreed out, let's just say... 30 degrees now on the left one, and this one's only 15 degrees, what's going to happen is your car is going to naturally, on full turn, this one's going to do more work as this one is the bigger wheel on this side, and it's going to help pull the car around as you go around. So then the next thing you have to take into account is your bump steer. So when you go into a corner, you have to understand that the pressure of these angles on your front end is going to change your camber and caster and everything else. you got to take into consideration those angles when you're setting up your buggy for oval. So I hope that helps you guys with trying to understand kind of some basic concepts of changing suspensions and what to look for, and how to set up a buggy accordingly to your driving style, and the track that you're on, and uh, everything else. So with that, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you did. I did not bore you with all of that wonderful um, tick tip on how to set up your chassis with your suspension, but I wanted to give you guys an idea. So, Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I am currently running 40-weight oil on the front and the rear. Um, that's something I may change down the road where I may... For example, loosen up this back right corner a little bit more to see if this won't help. That's going to come down to the track more than anything, but I think with higher bite, I'm going to want a little bit stiffer. Um, I want this to kind of plant and and hold itself down as it's coming off that corner, but we're going to find out. So that's the nice thing about it. You just get to try it and see what it does. So again... Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to go check out the uh, Amazon gift card drawing. I still have that going. I believe I finally hit over 200 subscribers. I think I'm up to 205 or something now, which is awesome. We're still growing as a channel. Thank you guys for that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of the B6 uh, Street Stock Oval. And uh, the next time you see it, I'm probably going to put all the electronics in, the steering servo, and uh, I've got the motor sitting right actually in front of the buggy and uh yeah we're done so thank you guys and and uh, next time you see it should be totally different so we're done thanks guys